Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike for Sim Racing 604. And uh, today we're going to be talking about five more tips for uh, Seto Corsa. So, my most popular video to date has been the five tips for beginners. So hopefully you're coming from that video. Um, it seems like there's a lot of people new to Assetto Corsa. Sim racing is growing in popularity. So uh, if you are among the th those new to the game, welcome. So hopefully you watched the first video and you've got sort of comfortable with what sim racing is and uh, the basics of getting around a track. Hopefully you've done a whole bunch of laps at 70-80% of uh, quote-unquote effort and you're sort of settling into your groove. You have a favorite car, favorite track and you're having lots of fun. So now what we want to talk about is improving speed and that's ultimately what sim racing comes down to. Actually first and foremost is fun but after that uh, we want to start improving speed and start competing in some races be that against the uh, console or computer or online or just against yourself challenging yourself to improve lap times and whatnot so that's what this video is going to be I'm gonna give you five tips and by no means are these the only five tips I encourage you to watch as many videos as you can read as many articles on improving lap times uh, don't just take my advice please go out and uh, see there's lots of people out there with great advice as well but anyway I'm going to give you five key tips that help me get a little bit faster and take you from new to sim racing to uh, improving. So the first thing we want to talk about is force feedback and FOV or field of view. So you see on the right I'm selecting apps and the FFB clip, FFB clip app is something that allows us to regulate the force feedback in your wheel. So you can see it pop up there in the lower left. And what it is, is it keeps your wheel from going into what we call clip. Uh, clipping is bad. So what clipping means in the world of force feedback and sim racing is that the wheel has been given too much data and it can no longer process it. So what it does instead is uh, just goes into what we call clip. And clip is actually an audio term as well. And what it means is it's just overload and what you get is effectively noise. And the force feedback on your wheel does the same thing when it's overloaded. So if you're, for example, in the middle of a turn and you go over a bump and your force feedback is set too high, it's going to go into clip and you're not getting any more information in the wheel. And it's absolutely critical that you have that information because when it goes into clip and you're not able to interact with your wheel anymore, what that means effectively is that your inputs don't matter and you want your inputs to always, always matter. You want ideally perfect linearity between if you move your wheel even slightly, the game reacts in kind. So that's not always the case, but uh, force feedback clip, FFB clip, allows us to, and it's a simple install. I did a video on how to install it. Um, but at a minimum, you should install FFB Clip and allow it to regulate your force feedback for you and stop the wheel from going into clip or, as we could also call it, overload. So the second, of, second part of the first tip is FOV or field of view. This is something else I did a video for. And basically it means... Um, how what you see in the driver's cockpit view so hopefully you're using this view and not a uh, chase cam view as we like to call it which is sort of behind and you can see the whole car what you want to be is in the cockpit and you want to have correct field of view and what correct field of view means is that um, effectively if you were driving the car for example what you can see now is just the top part of the steering wheel and the tires on this lotus 125 but you can't see the mirrors. And that would reflect what I would see if I was actually driving this car. And it's not one setting for everyone. It, what it is is based on your screen size and also based on your distance from the screen. So for example, this field of view works perfectly for me. So if I was driving the car and looking perfectly straight forward, roughly what I would see is the nose of this car, half of the steering wheel, and three quarters to all of the top of my tires. So this is the feedback for, excuse me, field of view setting that is correct for me. And it really allows me to get around the track a lot faster. Setting your FFB and FOV 
OV, force feedback and field of view, uh, can shave between 5 and 10% off your time depending on what your setup currently is. So you will want to do this. So setting correct field of view, like I said, I made a video or you can find a calculator online. Field of view takes maybe five minutes to set. Force feedback will take a little bit longer, but regardless, it is something you absolutely should should do, and I would even say must do. There's not a you know quality sim racer out there who doesn't have correct field of view settings or correct force feedback settings. And so put this at the top of your priority list for sure. There's a reason I'm leading with this. It's very, very important that this is set correctly. Next up, we are going to be talking about using the entire track and uh, most notably the curbs. So we talked in the previous video about how we want to go generally outside to inside to outside in our corners. And this is the fastest line we can take is going outside to inside to outside. What we essentially want to do is straighten the curve and make our turn in as smooth as possible going in and out of the corner. So the ideal scenario going through a corner would be to somehow make it into a straight line. So that's why we go outside to inside to outside. Something we didn't stress in the last video is using the entire track, including the curb. So as you can see in this lap, I'm going well outside of the uh, track with one set of tires. And this is done intentionally. I've maybe exaggerated a bit in this demonstration, but uh, what it's meant to do is show you that we should be using the entire track. If you've done any uh, research into racing lines or anything like that and started reading about apexes, um, you know that the fastest way around a corner is not only outside to inside to outside, it's also using the entire track, everything that's at your disposal, including the curb. Um, depending on where you come from uh, or your experience level with racing, you might be a bit hesitant to put wheels on a curb like that, but it's actually perfectly acceptable and the pros absolutely do it. So what you are doing by doing this is making the track wider. The usable space, the usable track is in fact widened. As you see me coming into this curve here, you see I go way, way over the curb, uh, both on the left-hander, the right-hander, the left-hander, and then to finish the curve, I go on the curb on the right. So this uses the entire track and helps us find more speed. If we were to stay inside the lines and not touch our wheels to the curb, we would be giving up a lot of speed. So you will see, again, if you've done any research, the fastest laps recorded on any given track always, always, always use the curb. We don't want to stay in between the lines by any means. We want to get used to and start building the confidence to run up on the curb and use the entire track. Because a wider track is better because we can do the outside to inside to outside more dramatically and uh, take advantage of straight lines through corners. So once again, that is using the curb to uh, negotiate corners. Still going outside to inside to outside, but using all of the track, including curbs, to do so. All right, so the next tip involves timing. So much more than speed, we measure our progress in time. So Assetto Corsa comes with some great apps. Uh, the Laps app, which you're seeing on the right side of your screen now, um, gives you a current lap time, which you see running right now, ticking up, a best lap time, which is your best of the session, and your last or previous lap time. Uh, the other app we want to open up is something called Performance Delta. And what Performance Delta does is it gives us a live readout of the time of our current lap. So the bar in the center will either go green or red depending on if we're ahead or behind of our last lap. So let's take a quick uh, couple of laps here around Imola in this Formula 79 and we will talk about our progress uh, against our all right, so I've skipped ahead uh, past my outlap here. So you can see the Performance Delta app in the left side of your screen there. It is alternating between green and red. Green meaning I'm ahead of my outlap and red meaning I'm behind the pace of my outlap. So just below the bar that you can see flickering green and flickering red, you can see the Delta. 
And what that means currently is that I'm 77 seconds ahead of my outlap or my previous lap. And the, uh, the reason for that is because on my outlap, I stopped and I hit record on this video and things like that. So it's going to be way, way behind. So I'm going to finish this lap and just notice though that uh, right now I'm slower going up this hill than I was the previous lap. And as I go around this corner a bit more aggressively this time, it is well into the green, meaning I'm well ahead of the pace of my outlap. My tires are a bit warmer now, so I can push the pace a bit. So again, uh, my outlap was a bit slower by, by design. I have to leave the pit and uh, again, hit record on this video and things. So what I wanna show you is I'm gonna slow right down into this corner and you can see it's still ahead of my outlap, but just remember that corner because we're gonna go around this Imola track one more time and just compare our previous lap to this lap. So uh, if that sounds confusing, what it is is when I go on to my next lap, it will live time that lap against the lap I'm currently running. So good speed out of that last corner. I'm well into the green and I'm going to finish, as you can see the uh, estimated time there, um, that should be about what I finish and it's well well ahead of the outlap. So now I'm on my second full lap. So I had the outlap, the lap you just saw, and now I'm on my third lap. So you can see I took a lot more speed into this corner and I'm well into the green. So I'm beating the pace of even my previous lap. So continued improvement here. Good speed down this straightaway and I'm going to go aggressively into this turn. And a bit slower coming out, but it finished strong. So uh, I'm more aggressive coming into this hairpin here. So I'm gaining time here. And again, uh, this next left corner, I took very aggressively on the previous lap. So you should see some red here because I'm going to take this one more conservative. And it goes slightly into the red. So I gave some time back there by not going as aggressively into that corner. And we're going to try a different line up the hill this time. This one less curb, involving less curb, and it turned out to be slightly faster, but just about on par. So this was the corner where I slowed right down, and this time I'm going more aggressively, and too aggressive. So I messed up there, I went too aggressively into that corner, and as you can see, I'm having trouble getting out of the red. I lost all my speed by oversteering there and putting myself into the grass but still just about right. So strong line through here, very aggressive. I missed my apex on that corner. I'm trying to get a good exit here. And I do, it's, it's just about on par with what it was last time. So as you can see there, I'm gonna finish about 0.1 seconds ahead of my previous lap. So that is your lap timing, and it's important to know how you're doing in terms of your current lap versus previous, and we want continued green improvement. So the next thing we want to talk about is learning the edge of the traction of your tires. So in your daily driving car, when you're driving to work or what have you, you want to have full contact with all time, and in fact, losing traction is a very unsettling feeling. But with a race car in a Seto Corsa, what we want to be is on the edge of traction uh, to gain the most speed. So the pedals app, which you can see on the right there, if we open that up and it's kind of hidden in the corner. So what I'm going to do is uh, actually drag that guy to the center and then that way you can see. So the green represents my accelerator, the blue represents my clutch and the red, which you'll see in a second, represents my brake. So coming into the next left hander, you're going to see me throttle back. You're going to see that green bar go well down, but not right off. So you can see, just giving it a little bit of gas as I go around this corner. And if I give it too much gas, I lose traction and end up in the grass. So that was by design, just uh, kind of showing that you do not want to give full acceleration at all times. either. Uh, probably down the straightaway there wouldn't be many reasons why you wouldn't want to go full accelerator but uh, going through a corner you want to manage your throttle so that's known as throttle control and as you can see there I'm giving uh, varying levels of throttle depending on where I'm at in the corner as you can see going around this right hander I have about half throttle and then once I'm in the straightaway I give it full throttle 
but the timing of that is something you're going to have to learn through repetition. And again, it's known as throttle control, so what you actually want to do is manage the traction and be on the edge of traction. So you want to learn this because there's a lot of speed to be gained there. You don't want to go too slow or too fast through a corner. And uh, the too slow seems fairly obvious. You want to keep maximum speed through a corner, but the too fast part uh, is, is somewhat counterintuitive because you think it's a race car, you want to go as fast as possible, but keep in mind that too fast, if I'm on the throttle too early going through a corner, I'm going to spin out just like that. So you want to really manage that, so that involves varying levels of throttle through a corner, and uh, I should say regulating levels of throttle through a corner. So let's take a look at two more corners here. We're gonna go through a right-hander and then a left-hander. So the right-hander, you can see my throttle, I'm just giving it a little bit. And then when I'm on the straightaway, back to full. And the next corner uh, is the left-hander and we really gotta watch it here. So you can see I'm just feathering it, feathering it. And then when it's time, I go full and end up on the curb, which is perfect. Now. Keep in mind, if I take too much speed into a corner, I need to back that off. So it's not necessarily, as you can see, I gave it too much there. It's not necessarily a matter of going half. And going into the previous corner, I should have had maybe a quarter power or something like that, because even a half was too much for that corner. So again, it's just a matter of regulating it, and you will learn through repetition. This is Red Bull Ring, or AKA Spielberg and it is a good course to learn this on because there's a few fast corners here where you really have to regulate the uh, gas pedal pressure and it's a good course to learn on there's only a few corners so great way to learn throttle control and it is something you will need to learn to go faster in a Seto Corsa so the final tip involves watching chase cams to get a good self-assessment. So as you can see here, as I'm whipping around uh, uh, Nordschleife in this Ferrari, my line seems pretty good from the inside. You know, I'm inside tight there on the left and then I fade outside nicely. I'm doing my outside, inside, outside line. Let's see, I'm almost on that curb there, that's great. Full throttle down the straightaway, finishing nicely on the outside of that previous corner. Missed it a bit there, no big deal. Nice and tight on the inside there, well outside here. Go back to the inside, this is looking good. Hug that corner on the left, hug this one again. Right down the center of the straightaway here. So another fast left-hander coming up, so I'm going to try and stay as inside as possible. Looks pretty good. Missed it a bit. No big deal. Down a couple of gears inside here. Hug that corner on the right. Finish outside so my lines are looking good. And down through this fast section, my lines are looking pretty good. I'm staying outside near the curbs. However. When I go back, this is an exact replay of what you just saw. When I go back to chase cam, we get a totally different view. You see how much I'm missing those corners. I'm well outside. As we discussed off uh, the top, I think it was tip number two of this video, we want to be using curbs, and as you can see, I am not. From the driver's perspective, it looked like I was hitting every curb or close to it, but in fact, you can squeeze half a car in between where I am and the curb, so I'm giving up a lot of speed here. So even the ones where I thought I was good, there's still a lot of space, so this chase cam is invaluable. You'll see sim racing, uh, pros not well pros and somewhat experts uh, they hate the chase cam but the chase cam is not meant to be driven in it's great for replays however because you can get an honest assessment of your racing line and, and as you can see mine was not good on this lap so the fast left hander I was talking about I missed by a mile there and then as you can see, I thought I hit this one on the inside, but I in fact was not even close. And then did I finish outside? 
not entirely, there's still a couple feet there, so I gave up a lot of speed. So the chase cam is invaluable for replays. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed these tips, and there will be more in the future.